Well, I seen Amanda. Oh, man. May 19th. May 19th, 2021. We're still going through it. I'm Donovan Sadiq. I'm unapologetic. I don't know what else I need to say. Listen to this verse. I hear you breathing, but your heart no longer sounds strong. But you kind of scared of dying, so you hold on. And you keep on blacking out, and your pulse is low. Stop trying to fight the reef, but just relax and let it go. Because there's no way you can fight it, though you're still trying. Oh, man, what a, you know, legendary artist. What a legendary song. I think it's it's very uh, critical that that song is being played the way it's being played because it, it's it's just incredible what is going on out here. You've got these raccoons defending white supremacy. It, it's it's incredible to me. It's just incredible. I'm Donovan Sadiq, you guys. I'm unapologetic. Welcome to the show. Uh, you guys can catch me on Spotify, iHeartRadio, all kinds of stuff. I'm on the War Zone with the Five Star General Jerry Wayne Monroe and Demetri K. And I'm also on the Demetri K. Show as well. And uh, I kind of dab a little bit here. I'm a little bit there. You guys will be very surprised at how uh, woke and active I am. You guys see the Wonder Pup Bell and my cats and all that other good stuff that's going on. But what I want to talk about, you guys, is the murder of Andrew Brown. And he's the young man that was murdered by race soldiers um, in North Carolina. Now, you know, um, and the, the district attorney there basically said it's a justified kill. What kind of ghoul must you be to talk about a human being being snuffed out like it's justified? How many of you guys remember that movie starring Ice-T where he was like being hunted and stuff? Because, you know, the ultimate prey is another human being, right? Because we're a little smarter than the average animal, I guess you would say, because, you know, you're dealing with the same type of intellect, right? Yeah, but what kind of ghoul would say that? It's a justified homicide. How is it justified when the officers put themselves in danger? Okay. And then how are they, how do they fear for their life? And they were the ones who were the aggressors. They have the body armor on, they have the guns, they have the tasers, they have the handcuffs, they have the shotguns. How do they feel fear? Feel <laughs> fear for their lives. And you've got all these coons out here uh, making excuses instead of being on code. These people are shooting us in the streets, in our homes, in our cars, wherever they can find us and justifying it by laws that they have written. And the black boule, like your Maxine Waters, your, your uh, Congressional Black Caucus and all these other people who sit silently and co-sign on it. It's basically like going to the dentist. And you know, when you go there and you got a bad tooth and you know, you know it's, it's hurting you and it's the pain. And so, what is the, so what does the dentist give you? He gives you this stuff called Novocaine to where you know, it, uh, makes, it makes you feel like, like they're not doing anything to you. But, you know, the pain is still there. It's just that you can't feel it anymore. And then, you know, he gets into your tooth and starts doing all this crazy stuff to you. But you can't feel it. But the damage that he's doing or whatever that the police, you know, the uh, dentist is doing is still being done. And you just can't feel it. And that's basically how they have us thinking. Oh, we ain't doing nothing to you when they actually are. So justified killing. What killed me was you have these civil rights Negroes running around here talking about, well, you know, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, a crime is a crime, a criminal is a criminal. No, black criminals aren't the same as white criminals. They're not the same. White criminals are on some different shit. Okay. How are they going to make you a cripple uh, and break your legs and break your arms and then call you a cripple? 
That's how white people operate. So stop it. Just stop it. It's totally ridiculous with some of these uh, civil rights people. Talk about, you need to start obeying the law. and what, what law? They don't even obey the law. They don't even ob- obey the law when it's not in their favor. So why should we? Well, you know, you just got to pray. You got to pray for the, for the ones that spitefully use you. Really? H- how did that work in the last 60 years? If, if that shit works, why are things so much worse today? Could somebody please answer that? Is anybody, is anybody hearing me? Can you answer that? If that rationale works, why is racism so much worse today? And it's worse because they're outright killing us and justifying it. I'll wait. It's just, it's just so sad. How, you know... And what's really even more sadder than that, you guys, is that I'll sit on Facebook or, you know, YouTube or whatever, or just, you know, channel surf, whatever. And I see black people going about their business like it's just another day. You know, they're just, oh, well, you know, hey, another black person's killed. As long as it ain't me, it ain't a problem until it's you. You know what I mean? And that's what kills me about it. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with a, a, a black woman wanting to put uh, European hair in her hair and look white. So that woman who thinks that having white hair in her head, is she a friend of the black community or is she an enemy of the black community? That black man that, that pines for white women, is he a friend of black community or is he an enemy of black community? Hmm, that's a very, very good question, wouldn't you say? Man, we got a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, we sit here and we complain. And, you know, what really bothers me about the whole thing is you got these Negroes out here. You got your Sororos and all these other people. Notice how silent they've been. Haven't said a word. They got Joe Biden in there. He ain't doing nothing. And you still got Negroes that will still sit there and tell you, well, he's only been in there about 100 days. But let's reverse that. What has he done in those 100 days? Look at everything that he did in 100 days. So let's reverse that. Explain that. But whenever it comes to black legislation or black issues, there's never any time. We got to give him more time. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick and tired of giving these people more time. It just, you know, I, I'm, I'm just at that point. And in the years that all these murders of black men have been going on, we have gotten more attention and legislation done by getting in the streets than the very people that we elect to sit at the, the table of so-called power. So why are we still doing that? You know, I, as a black man, I am getting very, very tired of seeing young black men being killed for little or no reason. A warrant, a, to serve a warrant doesn't manifest, and it shouldn't manifest into a death sentence. How does anybody say that this is a justified killing You were serving a warrant. This man wasn't in his house trying to do a shootout. You were serving a warrant. I don't see you guys do that when you're serving child support papers. Come on, y'all. But you got a lot of raccoons out here uh, making excuses for what the police do. And it's bullshit. You're telling me Serving a man a warrant is justification for him to be murdered. The police are not the judge, jury, and executioner. And if you're a police officer out there and you are more worried about your life than you are the people that you are sworn to protect and serve, you need to turn in your goddamn badge because you got it fucked up. Simple as that. Simple as that. You are a police officer to make sure that the people you protect and serve make it home. 
You got seven to eight police officers to serve a warrant on one man armed in body armor, shotguns, guns, tasers, handcuffs, helmets, military style helmets, and they feared for their life. Are you serious? To serve a warrant. Then these are so-called professional police officers. Not one of them are black. Not one. Not one. You couldn't find not one black person to go with you on that. But then again, that also brings in the question. You got a lot of these black niggas in the police department that see all this bullshit that's going on and yet say nothing because they're worried about a goddamn paycheck. They ain't worried about the culture. They're worried about their paycheck. And you got these niggas that will sit there and defend the bullshit. Just go on YouTube to any, um, you know, uh, cop watch channel and you'll see these niggas out there defending the bullshit. Okay. The problem is they know these police officers know that you don't know the law and you have an appeal to authority. And your appeal to authority is the fucking fact that they have a badge. So you automatically assume this police officer knows the law. I will challenge you. I will challenge you right now to tell you most police officers don't even know the law. Even when you're sitting in front of them and you try to Google it and show it to them, they don't even want to see it. They don't know the law. Okay. Majority of your police officers. And there's no way there's too many laws to, uh, for a person to, to even know, you know what I mean? But you have your smartphones, you could Google it to them and they get offended at that because they, they aren't trained properly and they, and they know they don't like it. They just want you to get out of the way. How do you have a problem with the person with a camera? So you're a professional police officer. You're going to go serve a warrant with seven other police officers and you are going to approach a vehicle and then put yourself in front of the vehicle. And then as the man who is uh, possibly startled or he fears arrest or whatever, he's trying to get away. Now, as a professional, you should know that. You should know that the scenario could happen but you're going to put yourself in front of a, a, a person who has a vehicle that could use it as a weapon. And you're going to charge him, even though you're the aggressor, you're going to charge him with a crime. Please make it make sense, everybody. I'm trying to make that make sense. As all my years in the military, I have yet to see a military tactician tell ground troops Okay, you see a tank, go right and just stand right in front of it and stop it. I, I, I just don't think that that would work because that person will, will that's inside the tank could possibly run you over. So professional soldiers, we know not to do that. I'm an airman. Uh, and we're not even talking about, and that was a combat scenario I gave you. These guys are actually trying out there doing their job. I'm an airman. Even on my own aircraft, I do not stand in front of a turbofan engine under no circumstances if the pilot is up there, if the pilot isn't up there, in the case that the engine turns on and I don't want to get sucked through it. That's just basic professionalism. I stay within the zone of staying out of the reaches of that turbofan engine. There's no point in me being in front of it or... I flew C-130s. So I don't want to be anywhere where that blade is going to start rolling and rocking and I could either get hit in the head or whatever. That's what you call professionalism because, you know, you, you, you know, you're good at your job. But they constantly do this. They do this in the media. They make the victim look like the offender and the offender look like the victim. And that is what they did in this case. And immediately... These old black civil rights, silver, silverhead Negroes talking about, well, he should have complied. He should have done this. He should have done that. You're not in a position to tell this man what he should do and what he shouldn't do. They were serving a warrant. They knew where he lived. They possibly know his family members. I mean, you guys, you Negroes that are in the South, y'all don't go nowhere. Y'all pretty much stay in the same area around your family. 
Y'all niggas don't go nowhere. Every time I go home to the South to visit my family, they're in the same goddamn town. Everybody knows them. They don't go anywhere because they're comfortable where they're at. So you mean to tell me that this man needs to be executed because they were trying to give him a warrant? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. So you got these people out here who are um, defending white supremacy. And see, that's the thing that kills me. We could never stay on code when it comes to our own. We all acknowledge that there's systematic racism. Everybody acknowledges that. But how do you deal with systematic racism? Well, we get into George Floyd bill. Let me tell you something about the George Floyd bill. With or without qualified immunity, the George Floyd bill is useless and it's teethless. And I will challenge you by saying this. Why is it useless and teethless? Even if they kept qualified immunity under the nigga Tim Scott, who said, oh, you could sue the, the uh, police department. That is still the people, the taxpayer. So let's say they take qualified immunity out of it. The police are still incentivized to do what they have to, to do what they're doing. OK. Well, what do you mean by that, young man? All right. This is the problem. Wouldn't it make more sense to repeal the 1994 crime bill? Because that takes away the incentive, the incentivization to fill the industrial prison complexes and these private prisons. Wouldn't that make more sense? The young man that was killed up in Minnesota, Deontay Williams, his name, I'm not, I can't remember his last name, but you guys know what I'm talking about. The young man that was killed by the 26 year old training officer. And any soldier will tell you her making that mistake is bullshit. That is bullshit. Your gun your weapon that you're going to kill with is always on your strong hand. You cannot mi mix up a taser and a gun. But that shows you white supremacy at its best. And, but you still got some civil rights niggas talking about, well, he should have complied. Well, he had, a, he had a warrant. That is not a death sentence, having a warrant. It isn't. So stop it. So this young man was murdered up there. Why was he murdered? Nobody's actually ever really thought about why this man was murdered and what is the correlation to the 1994 crime bill, okay? So I'm, gonna, I'm about to give you guys some game right now. So get ready, get ready. Take, get ready to take some notes because I'm about to drop it, all right? I'm about to give you the game. The 1994 crime bill which was authored by Joe Biden, incentivizes local police departments, state, be it local, be it whatever, to lock people up for the smallest of infractions. When we mean people, we mean black people, okay? Overall, black and brown people. Because if you look at the numbers in the 90s, the incarceration of black and brown people skyrocketed in the 90s. And yet you're going to have these, these niggas, especially these civil rights niggas, talking about, oh, the crime that was going on, whatever. Even Bill Clinton himself came out and said and even apologized for signing that bill. And he acknowledged the numbers of it's the intention of the bill wasn't meant for the way it was used. And he acknowledged the numbers of blacks and browns that were disproportionately affected by this bill. But he said that he was pressured by Joe Biden, the uh, NAACP, and all this other stuff, that all these other groups that were going on. So he said, well, you know, if the, the pastors and all these people are, you know, for it, I might as well sign it too. But he realized, you know, at, way after he left office, that that was the wrong thing to do. And he acknowledged that. Okay? So kudos to him for doing it, but you fucked us up. Right? And you got these civil rights errors. I had to tear one down today talking about, 
oh, well, you know, all the crime in the 90s, how could you forget that? Because, you know, it was out of control. I will never forget what happened in the 90s. A lot of us black people have relatives that have been in jail in the 90s and are still in jail probably to this very day. So don't sit there and tell me I forgot about the crime. Black people were disproportionately affected by this crime bill. Yes, drugs were rampant in our community. Crime was rampant in our community. But have you guys forgotten why did that happen? Do you, I mean, you guys make it seem like, and these civil rights niggas make it seem like, oh, you know, it was just a phenomena that happened. Crack was introduced into the black community. And you got these niggas talk about, well, you know, y'all shouldn't be using drugs. Y'all shouldn't be doing this. It doesn't matter what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. The fact of the matter is that black people don't own no boats. We don't own no goddamn planes. And we don't own no damn trains. So how is this shit getting in this country? That's the questions you need to be asking. Number two, did not the former CIA director, uh, director Woosley in the 1980s, late 80s, admit that the CIA intentionally dropped crack into the black community to help fund the war, the Iran-Contra wars? Did he not admit that? Isn't that public record? So if they intentionally did that, a very addictive drug like crack, and they willingly knew they did it, they willingly know the outcome. Crack fiends, crack babies, all this shit was going on. Now remember, in the 1980s, I, I'm a 50-year-old man now, 51-year-old man, just made my birthday. I'm a 51-year-old man now. I, in the 80s, was a teenager. So, who were the people using the drugs at that time? Yeah, you had a lot some teenagers using it. Wow, it was the civil rights era people. How many of you got uncles and aunts that were strung out on drugs and shit from the 70s and then the 80s hit and they got strung out on crack. How many of you mamas got strung out on crack? Civil era, civil rights era people. Because I was a teenager. Joined the military when I was 17. My mom had to sign me in. 1987. I was 18, no, no, 88. I, I, I hadn't turned uh, 18 yet. I was a teenager. So you mean to tell me the civil rights era people were the ones using crack and destroying families and stuff? Because a majority of the teenagers in my era, and I mean, you had the older kids too. Don't, I'm not discounting those kids, but what I'm saying is in general, it was civil rights era people and older. Okay, but I have to say civil rights because the civil rights era people were the ones coming back from Vietnam, all fucked up on the drugs, doing the uh, the love thing and shit like that. You know, in the 80s, they were most of them at that time should have been parents themselves. So, oh, it was you guys. Okay. And you had some younger people, some young Thundercats that, that taught, were taught the drug game. By who? Oh, the civil rights era people. Because a young person can't teach an older person much if the, if the older person is a teenager. It's like being a pimp. You, to be a good pimp, you got to learn from an older pimp, right? Hmm. So let's get back to the story. So if crack was intentionally dropped into our community, how do you go about blaming a victim of the circumstances that were put to them unbeknownst to them? Wouldn't that be like saying, I raped this woman and then you go up and ask her, do you hate me? Wouldn't that be the same thing? I raped you. And then I'm offended that you hate me. 
Wouldn't that be the same thing as what the United States government did to the black community in the 1980s? Then they put this bill on us to disproportionately. You planted a seed in the 80s to disrupt the community to where you get these people strung out on shit to where they're doing crimes and murders and all kinds of stuff because uh, uh, the psychosis of what they're going through, they have no control over prostitution and things that they normally would not have done because of social economic status. You're going to blame that on black people. So here we are fast forward 30, 40 years later, the 1994 crime bill is still on the books. So let me get back to that uh, Deontay Williams guy. Why was Deontay Williams stopped? Because he had an air freshener hanging from his mirror. But the cop didn't stop him because of the air freshener. That was the excuse used to justify the stop. He was stopped because he was a young man that was black that was driving. How else are you justified to run him to see if he had warrant to incarcerate him? So how dare you niggas out there defend white supremacy and the bullshit that is going on when it's right in front of your face? You guys are part of the problem. You. I just broke it down for you right there. In a lot of states, it is illegal to have anything hanging from your mirror that can obstruct you while you're driving. But if you look, everybody does it. They pick and choose what they want to enforce. But when it comes to a black person, especially a young black man, they're going to stop him. And that justifies them running him and putting him into the injustice system. So just stop it with the coonery. Just stop it. That man was stopped. He had a warrant. And he's dead. Well, he resisted arrest. What would you do? Police are coming into black people's homes, murdering us. They're murdering us in the streets. What would you do? You, you know, you, you might be one of those good niggas, them step and fetch it niggas. Yeah, master, whatever you say. Oh, I'm guilty. Yes, yes, master. That might be you. But you can't tell another man how they're going to handle a situation. You're not in that position. The coonery is ridiculous. There is no such thing as a good killing. If that was a white man, what do you think the DA would have said differently? Oh, that was a good killing. How many times have you ever heard a DA say that when it came to a white person? That was a good killing. I've never heard it. And then when they asked the DA guy about his decision and all this other stuff, he said, basically, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't give a shit, vote. This man is so confident at what he did that he's not even worried about re-election. And this is how they keep niggas traumatized into the situation that we are in. But then you got niggas like myself, black folks like myself, that are out here waking you motherfuckers up and telling you what is going on with no chaser. And then y'all want to worry about what we're saying. The question you need to ask yourself is, am I right or am I wrong? And if I am wrong, please state why I'm wrong. That's the problem within the black community. It's scary out here. It is very scary out here. A lot of people will say, well, you know, uh, you were in the military all those years. And, you know, and it's funny because a lot of my military friends were like, damn, Donovan, I didn't know you were like this. You didn't know I was like what? Well, when you were in the military, whatever. And I wasn't cooning in the military. I was the angry black dude, even in the military. Okay, but, you know, but of course, I wasn't vocal about 
my pro-black stance because, you know, you're, I'm in an organization that's basically organized slavery. So, you know, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to do that. So my time in the military, I socked it to him. I took care of my benefits. Education wise, I got everything that I can get out of them. I got my position as a uh, pilot operations officer because of a racist situation. Okay. The Air National Guard at the time, the commanding general said that the Air National Guard must reflect the community that it came from. The Alaska Air Guard had gone up there maybe like eight months prior and I had seen if they had any open positions. And they told me, nah, nigga, get the fuck up out of here. You know, basically, that's what they had said. Four months later, when this edict comes out from the Guard Bureau, I'm sitting at my unit in at Travis and I get a call and the call comes to me and, you know, they're like, hey, do you know who we are? Blah, blah, blah. You remember us? And I said, yeah. All of a sudden, a position was made for me. And I'm a young guy at the time. And I said, no, nah, I'm not going to do this. Now, fuck y'all. Right. I get a call from a Sergeant Gregory and uh, Sergeant Gregory was a brother. He was a recruiter. And he said, you need to fly up here because I need to talk to you. So I said, OK, cool, cool, cool. You know, whatever. So, you know, I take some time. I go up and see him and me and him, I go to his office and me and him have a heart to heart. And he had told me, he had said, Hey, they got this position here. Da, 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 da. They named you as the person that they want to deal with because you're already in the system. You're already, you know, doing your thing. You've already got your flight stuff done and blah, 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 blah. You got a background in it. I said, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, you need to take it. You know, and I'm a young guy at the time. And I said, no, no, I'm not going to fuck this. I'm not no token. He said, no, no, no. Don't look at it that way. He said, they came to you. You got people knocking at the door. They're saying, all you got to do is go through the training and make it. Here's your opportunity. And I didn't look at it that way. And I said, you know what? You're right. And so I used the system against them for the opportunity that it gave me. And I socked it to them. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't make any waves. I was, uh, uh, they used to call me Mr. Reliable because I would take all of the missions that people didn't want to take. Like I was flying to the top of the world up to Barrow, Alaska. I mean, just anything that was shit. I never turned down a mission because I knew everybody's looking at me. And the more, and of course, the more experience you get, the better, you know, pilot you're going to be and all this other stuff. So I didn't really make a lot of waves. Didn't do, you know, didn't do some stuff, got sick when I was in training. They brought me home and they seasoned me at home and stuff. And I went through the whole thing, but I didn't bring them any problems. If anything, when I left, they were kind of, I'm not saying they were sad to see me go, but they were kind of sad to see me go because I was the type of guy that took all the shit missions. It didn't matter. I was like, yeah, I'll go. If it, you called me at the last minute, I'll go. My bags were always, always ready. Cause yeah, I remember Alaska, nine months of winter. I'm from California. That just shit don't happen for me. So I wanted to get out of there anytime that I wanted to get out of there. So I digress. So we have to stop talking down our own. We get that enough in the system that we are operating in. The Makisha Taylor girl that got killed, the little 16-year-old girl got killed. You know, I'm looking at it like, oh, wow, that was a good shoot, you know? But now that I re-looked at it, no, that wasn't a good shoot. That wasn't a good shoot. That officer did not know who was who when he arrived there. And it wasn't a good shoot. And I'm not going to sign on to say that it was. His life wasn't in danger. He he didn't know who the aggressor was. But he just shot. uh, Five to seven officers at Andre Brown to serve a warrant, five to seven officers. Now, I want you guys to reimagine this. What if it was two officers and one of them came up with paper in hand and said, hey, are you Andrew Brown? Yeah, I'm Andrew Brown. Hey, I got this uh, warrant for you. I need you to come and, you know, to come with me. You got your back up there and you're going up to him civilly because he wasn't expecting you, correct? But you're going to come up to him military style, aggressive, 
He doesn't know who you are. I don't know if this man is in the dope game or not. He doesn't know what's going on. You could be clowns in costumes for all he knows. He's in the dope game. You guys are probably saying, well, Dom, how do you know all this stuff? I don't. I watch, you know, some a lot of movies and shit. I watch New Jack City. Okay, fuck it. You know, I'm a square. I'm as square as they come, but I'm not stupid. How only toward black people is the death of another human being justified? I'm sick of it. I'm totally sick of it, you guys, because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And yet you got these coons out here talk about they Christians and they Southern Baptists and they all this and they all that. And they talking about it was a good shoot too. What if that was your son? If that was your son, would that have been a good shoot? I'm just asking a question. If that was your son, would that have been a good shoot? Ah, now you're thinking, oh no, not my baby. Seven police officers to serve a warrant and they were the aggressor. No weapon. He's already in the car. And so as a professional officer, I'm going to stand in front of the car and I'm going to go toward the car to get the man out. And he's already in a car that is a weapon. Does that make sense to you guys? Yep. Well, to some of you niggas, it does. You know why? Because y'all getting that government cheese. Y'all getting y'all butter biscuits. Y'all better start waking up, y'all. And we need to start holding these people accountable. The new black media, thank you guys for what you do. I appreciate it. I'm Donovan Sadiq, you guys. You guys can find me on the War Zone Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. I'm sorry. 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Friday. I'm also on the Demetri K Show, Sundays, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Then you can catch me on the regular show, Free Flow Fridays, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We just have to do better, you guys. It's just getting, it, this stuff is just getting insane. And I'm just sick of it. But you guys are out there going on your trips. You know, it's like, to, until the next tragedy. Until the next tragedy. Got your little pink hair. Got your weave in. And you talk about you down for blackness. I just don't see it. I'm Donovan Sadiq, you guys. I'm unapologetic. The world is different since he's seen it last. Out of jail, been seven years. And he's happy that he's free at last. All he had was his mother's letters. Now he's mobile, and he's gotta make a change and make it for the best. But he's black, so he's got one strike against him. And he's young, plus he came up in the system. But he's smart, and he's finally making 18. And his goal's to get on top and try to stay clean. So he's calling up his homie who came up. Living lavish, now they dealing with the same stuff. And had that attitude that who he was was worth late. And with that fucked up attitude, he killed his first man. Now it's different, he did dirt. And realize killing it, me coming up, but it still hurts. And can't nobody change.